<laughs> Hello everybody on YouTube, uh, it's Mealy Ray Waters, and today I'm going to show you how I made my Rachel Alucard Black Blue Umbrella. Now, um, as you've seen on the internet, uh, there's not a lot of tutorials, so I hope, uh, you know, at least watching this video, you'll have a better understanding on how to make this. I will not be making this from scratch because um, of the cost of the materials and because of the, you know, just the sheer time alone in making this project. So I will show you the materials I used. Um, I will give you a list of, you know, everything you're going to need. And I will uh, explain step by step on how I did this. I hope everything fits in this video. Remember to keep an eye out for um, any sort of pictures that I might post uh, during the video. And uh, for any sort of writing. Because I uh, just finished making it all and I'm pretty sure I forgot quite a few things. So I will have, um, you know, little captions and stuff everywhere if I forgot anything. Um, so remember to, you know, keep an eye out for that. And I hope you enjoy. I hope this helps um, people who are doing Rachel Alucard. For, you know, their future convention. Um, yeah, enjoy and happy early Halloween, everybody. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is go out to your fabric store or a Walmart or anything, you know, any place that you can get actual fabric from. You're going to want to buy a black fabric. I bought three yards of each. You will have excess if you do, but I was not sure if I was going to need more or less. Uh, and then you're gonna, of course, you're going to have to buy your black, and then you're going to buy your red or your burgundy. Her umbrella is more of a burgundy color, so I bought burgundy. I bought three yards of each. As you can tell, I have plenty left over. You're also going to need to buy a sheet of white felt, a sheet of black felt, a sheet of pink felt and a sheet of red felt. That's what it looks like. Okay. Now you can either go out and just buy normal felt like this, you know, there's no sticky side. Or you can buy the sticky side or if you're very, very excellent at sewing, you may want to embroider the actual thing yourself. Next thing you're going to need is a pair of scissors. Now if you get duck canvas like I did, that's the material I bought right here, you're going to need more than one pair. I busted about two pairs of scissors actually cutting this stuff. It was very thick, it was not fun, uh, so you know, a sharp pair of scissors. You're going to need a bunch of these little things, these little needles. You're going to need a spool of, actually you're going to need two of these. So you're going to need one in black and one in burgundy or red. Anything that will um, match this color. I have only a white thing left because I used an entire spool of uh, red. But this is the color that I actually used, as you can see on my bobbin. It pretty well matches. Next thing you're going to need if you do not use a sticky felt, and even if you do use a sticky felt, I would suggest buying this, is tacky glue. Next thing you will need is stuffing. Any kind of pillow stuffing, as you can see, I bought polyester fiber fill. Next thing you're going to need is a golf umbrella, or a smaller or bigger umbrella, some kind of umbrella that you're going to be comfortable using. You can tell in a lot of her pictures that she uses a pretty big umbrella, so I used a golf size umbrella. You can get one at uh, your Dollar General for about $6. That's what the case looks like. It's a nice dirty case. You can get them in a variety of colors. Um, they're always two-tone though. If you find one cheaper, that's a solid color, that's fine, but you really don't have to worry about colors. Because in the end, you're going to end up with this. As you can tell, there's no fabric at all. I'm not going to use any of the fabric on there. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your umbrella and you're going to want to take off all these little caps. As you can see, there's one for each little arm or leg or whatever it is. You're going to want to take all these caps off and then you're going to want to open up your umbrella and you're going to want to detach it. As you can see, there are strings that attach the fabric to the frame. You're going to want to take all of that off. So have a loose piece of fabric that's only attached at the very top. Afterwards, you're going to want to take a pair of scissors and you're going to want to cut, leaving yourself just a little bit of fabric. Now, if you're really confident in your sewing skills and you're sure you're going to make, you know, a small hole on top after you're finished or you're going to be able to um, just close it up entirely, you can cut this entire fabric off. I mean, you can strip it straight down to the metal. If you buy a golf umbrella that also has a removable cap, you won't have to really worry about this. As you can see, my cap is not removable at all. So I strip mine completely until it looks like this. As you can see, there are no caps at all. Wireframe. 
That's all there is. And there's just a little bit of fabric that I could not cut off with scissors. So afterwards, you'll have, you know, your umbrella fabric. What you're going to do with your umbrella fabric, especially if you've got a two-tone umbrella, which is much easier, is you're going to want to measure it out, folding it in half. Now, you want to take this to your fabric store, uh, and, you know, of course, your the lady who helps you or whoever's working will help you find out how many yards you are going to need of each fabric. But you want equal, and whatever you do, probably a little bit more of black than of red, because you'll want to create the head, the paw, and the ears afterwards. So after you get home and you have all your fabric and all the materials you need, you're going to want to cut your shape out. And what I mean is not taking an entire thing and cutting it in half. You're going to, but if you want to do that, I mean, you can. I did not. Maybe I took the hard way in doing this. But what I did, see, and I have a two-tone umbrella. I cut a green. Actually, mine was blue, but I cut the actual original pattern out. So you had a triangle left. It was, you know, the shape in between both wires. And you're going to want to take that and place it on top of your material. Afterward, you're going to want to take some kind of, um, maybe a marker or chalk is what I prefer using because you can wash it off right after if you get it on anything. And you're going to want to trace your pattern out. You're going to want to do eight of each color. Then you're going to want to cut it out and then sew two pieces together at a time. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut and sew it together. It's a little triangle form. I don't know if I can show this. But say this is your triangle right here. You're going to want to take one triangle and you're going to want to sew it along the edge. So you will have two triangles in a form of the umbrella going to want to do this for all eight pieces until you have just two pieces and then you want to sew the two pieces together and then of course sew those last two together to make your top hoop. Um, so you're going to have a top and you're going to do the same thing for the bottom. Afterwards, you're going to want to spread out your skeleton. You're going to want to put your first one on there. Spread out the arms. Make sure everything is even for both sides. Then you're going to want to sew it along the bottom. So like so, you're going to sew it along the bottom. Afterwards, you will leave a very big section open like you would any sort of pillow as you can see this is where I or this is where I hemmed it right here by hand it's not the greatest job but it works but you're gonna leave you're gonna want to leave a big piece there like you would with any sort of pillow if you're gonna make a pillow you know and then you fold it inside out or you pull it inside out and you'll be left with an entire cover it's going to be like an empty pillow. You'll have, you know, plenty of room in between. But you will have an umbrella cover. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take um, some kind of, maybe a poster board. Or if you can do this just by memory, my hand, that's fine. But you're going to want to draw yourself a big half circle. Now, the point in doing this is to help shape the head of the animal. So you're going to want to draw yourself a nice big half circle. And then you're going to want to draw yourself a um, curved triangle like that. Just, you know, a curved triangle for the ears. You're going to want to cut out the patterns on your black fabric. And then you may want to cut out, if you want more of a circular head like I did, um, a smaller triangle to go in between the two circles so you have a much, you know, more circular head. Afterwards, when you have it all done, Please, you know, spread out your umbrella, putting your um, the top material on, and then pinning the head to the top material. So you make sure this is even. You may need help doing this, so you know somebody can hold it up. Next, you're going to want to do the same thing with the ears. I would suggest doing the ears first. As you can tell, um, you just take two of the curved triangle pieces. 
You sew them together and then you stuff them. You do not sew the bottom, but you can hem the bottom so it has a much more nicer appearance. Afterwards, you're going to do the same thing with the head, sewing it all the way through, but leaving this section open so that you can sew the smaller triangle to it. So you're going to have like a, just a regular circular shape. Then with the ears, you can sew them wherever you need to. Uh, you're going to have to hand sew this now. So I sewed mine here and over there, leaving quite a big section in the middle. So afterwards, you will have a plain looking cat head that should look something like this. Afterwards, you're going to put your hand through the section that you left open in between your two colors, and you're going to start to hand sew it all the way around. Now, once you've hand sewed most of it, you're going to leave another section open to stuff everything inside. It's going to take a lot of stuffing. You do not want to overstuff it because you may want to um, close your umbrella slightly. You will not be able to close it all the way. If you figure out how to close it all the way by filling this up, um, you know, congrats. I could not. I had to detach the fabric, which is not hard to do, and I'll explain how you do that afterwards. But anyways, you're going to want to stuff everything. You know, your cat ears will already be stuffed. This will be the only kind of stuffing you'll have on there so far. You stuff everything. Then hand sew it closed so that you have your stuffed cat head on top of your material. Once you are finished with all that, you're going to want to draw out a small paw. Now, as you can see, I only did one. Some people do two. I got lazy and only did one. So it's just a normal shape, you know, just a little paw right here. You're going to want to stuff that, hem the bottom, find a place on your umbrella, and then sew it. After you finish with that, you may want to hand sew the hem on here so you can close the umbrella completely and you're going to want to start to attach it to the umbrella. Now attaching it to the umbrella I would suggest opening your umbrella frame all the way first attach a few caps on the bottom and go from there. Do not start attaching further up the frame yet. Attach all the caps Make sure everything is even, and then close your umbrella slightly, and then you may start to attach it. Now, you'll have it all attached. You're going to want to open up your umbrella completely. Make sure it opens without tearing, and then close it again. See how far you can close it, and then you're going to open it up one more time. Afterward, you're going to start your felt project. You're going to want to cut out many different shapes. You're going to want out of, of your pink two small circles. Of your white, you want to start off with two slanted eyes, and you're going to want to position these on your face, make sure you like everything. Then you're going to want to cut out the red, and then two little black slits afterwards. You'll want to start on the mouth. I found the mouth to be most difficult because I did not like the size, and uh, there was also the positioning. It just took me a while to actually do the mouth. Then you're going to want to cut out your tongue. Then you're going to want out for the paw, one very big round circle, and three smaller. Now, as you can tell, mine are not really circles up on top. They're like more of an oval shape. Whatever works for you. It uh, doesn't matter how big or how small you want it. Whatever looks nice. You're going to want to take your felt glue, your tacky glue, and you're going to want to start to glue everything together. What I did for the eyes, though, is before I glued the white, I glued the red and the black first. So I had that all taken care of, and then I glued it all together. Now, if you get the white felt and you just want to do the tacky glue, you're going to see circles and stuff from where the glue is. Do not worry about this. This will fade um, after the glue is completely dried, so you will not be able to tell, as you can see with mine. You can't even tell any of the glues there. So, you know, you're going to want to position that, find everything, um, wait till it dries, then you'll be able to mess with it. Now, if your hand, if your little cat paw, does not stick up when you open it, you can always attach it to the umbrella on your last finger because that's what I did so as you can see I attached mine right here afterwards open your umbrella one more time make sure it all looks nice and then you should be done